So we can derive the finite difference approximations from, and the reason I say approximations is because they're multiple, as we'll see. We can, we can derive those from a Taylor series expansion. So remember, if we have a continuous function f of x, then it's um, Taylor series expansion about a point x plus delta x is equal to Two factorial, three factorial, right? And so on, right? It's an infinite expansion, right? And so <coughs> what we can do is we can we can use this to help to build, you know, basically we can take this equation and we can solve this equation for the first derivative, right? So if instead of just uh, to, to use um, variables that we're interested in here just for consistency, right, what we're interested in solving for is, or looking at, is a Taylor series expansion of P at X plus delta X is equal to P of X plus partial P and I'm going to go ahead and stop after the second order term in this case and I'm just going to rearrange this equation solving for this term. Right. So if I do that, if I solve this equation for that term, then I have right. So notice that this is you know, this term I've divided by delta x, so what was delta x squared up here is now just delta x, okay? And so this, what we're going to do is we're going to truncate these higher order terms. We're going to take these guys and we're going to remove them or we're going to write them as terms that are on the order of delta x, right? And so basically, as an approximation to the derivative, uh, partial p partial x, we have this term that we're going to use, and then we're going to understand that there's error in that approximation on the order of delta x. So as delta x goes to zero, these higher order terms get really small. Therefore, our approximation of the derivative is better as these terms get really small. Right? And we call this a forward difference approximation. We call this a forward difference approximation because we, when we wrote the Taylor series expansion, we took a point x plus delta x, right? So this is a forward difference approximation. Okay. Now we can also do a backwards difference approximation. So use it using the same, a, a Taylor series expansion, this time about the point P X minus delta X, we have
we have something like that. And this, again, we'll then solve this equation for this term. Um, notice that all the all the odd orders are going to have a negative sign in front of them. So this this next one would have a negative. So um, so we'll solve this this equation now for the term in red there. And what we have is something like that. But again, we're going to truncate this, say that this is on the order of delta x. And then again, what, what we have here is a backward difference approximation. So we have forward difference and backward difference, and I think it's pretty self-evident why they're called forward and backward. One, we take an increment delta x ahead of x, you know, forward of x, and the other we take an increment, we do the Terry series expansion, um, an increment behind x backward of x. Right? So that's forward and different. Uh, these are approximations to first derivatives that are what we call first order accurate. So first order because we only have delta x to the first power, right? So we call these first order accurate. So we can come up with a better accurate, a more accurate um, solution, uh, or I'm sorry, a more accurate ap approximation. We can come up with a more accurate approximation um, to the first derivative by subtracting one the full, by subtracting the Taylor series expansion of the point P of x plus delta x, that's equal to P of x. So this is the, this is the equation we use to arrive at the forward difference approximation. What we're going to do is we're going to subtract from it the equation we use for the backward difference approximation. So this is this th understood that this is sort of one equation subtract another one. So we're going to have to subtract the left hand sides and the right hand sides from each other. Uh, I guess it's necessary to write the write the third order term here. Let's see why. Okay, so if I subtract one equation from the from the other, right, we have. that on the left hand side. On the right hand side, all of the odd terms will cancel each other, right? So I'm subtracting this from that. Um, then I'm tr uh, subtracting that from that, right? And so what's left then is 2, because I have a negative and a negative, 2 something like that. So now again, solving this equation for this term gives us now this time we have delta x squared here. So we're going to say this is on the order of delta x squared. And this is what we'll call second order accurate. 
like that. Then this guy, it's called the central difference approximation. So again, it's an approximation to the first derivative, but this time it's more accurate, it's second order accurate. And again, it should be self-evident why we call it the central difference approximation, because, <coughs> uh, because now we're taking a, a center difference about, you know, we're, we're, we're incrementing x plus delta x and then subtracting from that x minus delta x. So there's a central, uh, there's a symmetry about the increments that we're taking versus the forward or backward difference. Okay, what about an approximation to the second derivative? So for an approximation to the second derivative, we can use these same two equations up here, except this time instead of Instead of subtracting them from one another, we're going to add them together. So let's see what happens when we do that. When we add them together, and I'll stay in blue down here because uh, just to indicate that this blue plus sign is, is the operation we're doing down here. So then adding the left and right hand sides together, Now this time, because we're adding them together, it's the odd terms that cancel each other. And I'll go ahead and write the, even though I haven't written it up above, I'll, I'll go ahead and write the fourth order term here too. And so now, solving for this equation for this term, then, gives us I'm sorry, this should be derivatives of order 4 here. Again, this is going to be on the order of delta x squared. So we have a second order accurate, again, for the second derivative. And again, this is a central difference approximation for the second derivative. And again, should be self-evident why. We're taking perturbations about a positive delta x and negative delta x. Of course, this one also has the, the, you know, the 2 p of x term there, too. So those are our finite difference approximations. Forward difference, backward difference, central difference for the first derivative, and central difference for the second derivative.